Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. It's theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Norman Filosetti, uh, president of Data Integrity, award winner for the winning edge in the X server category. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. Um, so first of all, let's get this out of the way. You're the president of the company, you won the award. Tell us about the, uh, the award, the winning edge is an award, highly coveted yes. prize. Tell us about the award, the category, the judging. Uh, share with the folks out there. Okay, well the, the Winning Edge Award, uh, again, uh, as you say, it's a special award uh, given to us uh, for our success, culminating an 18 month uh, really uh, um, strategy that we put in place to uh, develop our, our, our learning, our technical skills, and uh, that uh, came together with uh, some really great partners in, in business, and uh, the success of the award is, uh, is just amazing, and we're going we're gonna to cover it. What was the big reason? What was the reason why you won? Just quality? Was there variables involved? Was there the weighted judgment system? How did they decide? We sell that? a lot of stuff. <laughs> we, we sold a lot of stuff. There's no question about that. That's there was awesome. a lot of stuff. That's <laughs> heavily weighted. Yeah. 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 It better be. No question about it. It, it was, it was uh, certainly an important factor. We were about 700% uh, uh, in terms of growth. Uh, wow. So that was huge for us. Uh, plus, what was important to us is the, the skills that we gained. Um, those were, were part of the factors in scoring. So we got technical skills, we got executive uh, knowledge base, uh, we, we, we developed Top Gun type classes and, and fantastic. Norman, how are our skill sets changing? Um, how are your requirements changing? How are customers you know, sort of demanding that you change? Is there more of an application centricity? Is there you know, faster cycle times? Any other particular skills that you guys are bringing in that you you've had to uh, uh, accommodate the market over the say, past three or four years. Certainly applications are, are a key point, uh, and we've developed them over the years. Uh, we've had a strong presence uh, in the enterprise, and, and certainly they're key applications that we deliver. Let's talk about the, uh, the build out of the cloud. Obviously, X server is really well positioned on the commodity side for private cloud implementation. Are you seeing a lot of that? Is it morally data centers, deployments? What, what's the customer uh, situation for you guys there? Well, Primarily we're in the data center, so we, we, we deploy a lot into the, the private cloud structure. Um, but we also have a, a key component of our business in retail, and we have uh, applications that are actually driven in mission critical out in the field, and we're starting to virtualize those environments. On the growth, you mentioned 700%, where'd that growth come from, mostly retail? Mostly retail, yeah. Okay. How, many, how much percentage of your, of your customers are cloud-based? Uh, and okay. how would you peg them in the order of kind of evolution? First yeah. grade, second grade, elementary, college. I would say, I would say they're, they're, they're right at first grade. I think there's a very small percentage of our business that is cloud, um, but they're moving in that direction. They're excited about it. They're, they're looking for the right workloads to run in that environment. You, um, you guys are specializing in, in x86, right? Correct. That, that's sort of, so what's happening in x86? I mean, Intel, obviously, the dominant player. We had a number of guests on yesterday from Intel. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing, actually, what that company has done. You made a good bet, obviously. Yeah. Um, the ecosystem, the you know, robustness, the levels of service. So, I wonder if we could talk about that ecosystem, what it means to you as a partner, and then I want to follow up with sort of the, you know, the Lenovo deal. Yeah, well the ecosystem is a strong part of why we, we stayed in the x86 platform. Um, it's, it's allowed us to really draw out uh, in storage and other areas um, and, and allow us to really develop a, a strong business in the enterprise. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, the next couple of months, certainly with Lenovo being a player and, uh, and how that will impact us so with IBM. So I mean, IBM's moving 7,500 people over, over there, so yeah. obviously a lot of the guys you're working with now, or maybe all the guys you're working with now are, are, are moving over, so those relationships stay intact. Um, what, do you, what do you see as the opportunities? What concerns do you have, and how is IBM communicating to you? Well, IBM is communicating to us, interestingly enough, uh, much more information than is Lenovo. Lenovo, uh, being constrained by the people who are acquiring, uh, tell us very little about what's going on. Although we have some nervousness, uh, we feel that it, it could be a very strong, uh, positive uh, uh, initiative here. Um, 
the, the thing that we're concerned about is how that relationship will play out over time. Uh, we were there when, when uh, Lenovo acquired the desktop business. All positive, everything's been great. We think the template's there, and the next, uh, the next uh, move is going to be uh, a positive one, and we'll all succeed. So you have an existing relationship with, with, with Lenovo. Um, okay, so what do, you, what, what do you think you can learn from the sort of previous transition? Now that was a while ago, and it was in a different business, but, but what, what kind of learnings did you, can you pull from that? Well, what learnings you can pull from it is that we understand the infrastructure, we understand the way that Lenovo operates, we have a great relationship with Lenovo at this time, um, but there is a different play between the way that, that uh, Lenovo goes to market and IBM does, and that's where the nervousness comes in, and whether those changes will be all positive. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about data integrity. So, so regionally, where, where do you guys focus? We're primarily in Ontario and Canada. Uh, we, we do uh, strongly uh, focus on the uh, GTA or the Toronto area. So you do a lot of government business, presumably, is that right? Or? Uh, interestingly enough, government, uh, crown corporations primarily, not the government directly. So, so you sell the, to companies that are selling to the government, uh, or not uh, necessarily? No, the, these are companies or entities that are uh, principally owned by the government, but not specifically run as a ministry or, or a, an entity within the government. So quasi-government services. Yeah. Right? In, in Ontario, we have uh, parts of the this Crown Corporations that do retailing, and they're one of our strong retail partners. And you don't sell in, in the United States, is that correct? No, or? we don't. Okay. So talk about the, 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 the markets in, in Canada. What are they, what are they like? Uh, uh, I mean, to the extent that you can comment. Are, are there discernible differences between what's going on in the U.S.? I mean, you're close enough that you can see, or is it is it sort of homogenous? Well, I think it's hard for me to, to make an opinion. Of, certainly, uh, I would think it's homogenous, although I strongly understand the Canadian market rather than the American market. Um, we see great growth. We've, we've had, um, in the Ontario and in particular the Toronto area, almost, uh, in, certainly in the clients that I do business with, almost zero impact by any recession. So we've just continuously grown over a period of time, uh, the 34 years we've been in business, and uh, it's just been uh, positive. So Norman, you were talking earlier about, we were talking about skill sets and you mentioned applications. Are you seeing um, a push toward specific environments? You know, you hear a lot about SAP HANA, uh, Oracle environments, uh, certainly VMware, it's sort of really not an app, but it's a workload. Uh, and of course Microsoft. I would imagine you do a lot in Microsoft accounts. Yeah. Is that is that fair? Absolutely fair. And and have you have you had to acquire specific expertise there? Is there adva advan is it advantageous for you to do so? Can you, for instance, make more money, have better margin if you if you do that? I wonder if you could talk about sort of the the channel dynamic a little bit. Okay. Well. It in terms of the skill sets, uh, Microsoft certainly is one of those areas that we have focused on over the num number of years. Um, it's it's a, a difficult, challenging uh, market. Uh, the margins aren't that strong in that area. Certainly there are better margins in some other areas we could focus on. We're looking at developing other practices that, that will kind of bring us into uh, the SAP world as, a, as an example. But we focus on, on Microsoft. We are, we are doing well, we have the skill sets, we've organically developed them uh, in-house, and uh, it's, it's a strong part of our business. Okay, so, I mean, am I correct that over the last, let's say five years, you're certainly seeing margins get squeezed. Um, so you've got a transition from sort of the, you know, it's, it's a pejorative, I'm just going to say it, the box selling mentality to the value added mentality. Right. Where is that value add going forward in your view? Hmm. That's, that's the $64,000 question. The value add is certainly in the spin that we can make uh, on our delivery. We, we certainly have um, a unique position in our marketplace in that we have uh, seasoned professionals that can deliver uh, unique and certainly complex solutions uh, when the client has uh, those unique and complex uh, problems. I mean, you have the relationships, right? I mean, that's, that's why you do so well in our are so successful. What are your customers telling you? How do they want to transform and, and how do you respond? How do we transform and respond? Well, they're asking us to deliver uh, state-of-the-art solutions, whether it be a cloud solution that they're looking to move forward to, or, or simply just trying to uh, deliver their line of business applications where they have mission critical. 
Are you seeing um, a lot of uptake uh, in the public cloud? We aren't in our level, no. Yeah, so you, you were talking to John earlier about that. Do you, why do you think that is? Is it just because of the particular industries that you focus on? or is it I think it's a combination of that and the fact that Canadians are a little more conservative than Americans and our uptake is a little bit slower. Great. So on the channel side, Dave asked a question about X86. Obviously sales are good. Um, is there a transition plan? Have they communicated to you with Lenovo? Is it, is it seamless process? Is it new contracts? How does that work? Yeah, it's an absolutely seamless process. They're looking at this being completely forklifted into Lenovo and uh, status quo. We certainly don't see any changes probably for at least a two year period. Yeah, we were talking to some sales guys last night. It's the same guys at IBM. Absolutely. So it's really not that, it's not like a big deal, right, no. in your mind? No. Contracts, everything's smooth? Yeah, absolutely no contract changes, we've been told. Uh, the concern we have going forward is Lenovo is not a certification-based type company, so they may change the, the dynamics and who has access to products, and that's where the nervousness comes in. So that's just channel management issues for you guys, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. What do you think about the power system stuff? We had a big uh, showing with power, the power systems at uh, IBM Impact. Um, is the word out there on that? I mean, obviously with the, the Lenovo taking the low end, going to blow that out. Certainly, sales will be accelerated. Not a, not a small, maybe a bump in the road, maybe. But now you have on the high end the power system. Do you, you guys look at that at all? No, we're not in the power uh, at all. Okay. How about the customers you have? What is the, uh, what's their take on it? The take on power yeah. itself? Well, they're looking at power. They're certainly interested in Power 8 and seeing where this is going to play out. But uh, uh, the open uh, structure now uh, with power being an open product, uh, it's certainly going to explode, I think, with Google and, and some of the other players tie in that are getting involved. Talk about the changes in the industry. I want to get your take on it. As someone who's been in the industry and, and, and you built a business, and you have a lot of, at stake with, with IBM. What, what's changed in the, in the partner channel um, over the past few years that, that's different? Because cloud certainly is disruptive. All the you know, mobile and social, all the stuff that they're talking about is changing the world. How do you see that affecting your business? Well, it's, it's incredible, and, and coming from that old school type of mentality, and I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the social kind of guy, but I, I have a couple of young gentlemen who work for me, happen to be my sons, they're in their mid-twenties, they understand it, they get it. They tweet? They tweet. They tweet like crazy. They tweet, they know what's going on, and I certainly have deferred to them in that area, and, and that's really where the future is. Talk about the value proposition for your company. Talk a little bit about uh, what you guys do and some of the key things that you bring to the table um, helping customers. Yeah, uh, our value proposition really concentrated on our seasoned professionals, our complex solutions that we've delivered, and certainly our reputation of being on time and delivered on budget. And some of the clients that you have, again, mostly retails or other sectors you're doing well in? Um, we primarily deal in retail and in finance. What are the biggest challenges you have this year going forward you know, with the industry going on? See the portfolio refresh for IBM is transformative on their end. How does that impact your business and what are the big challenges you guys have this year? Well, the portfolio changes really isn't a big impact for us. It's always an evolutionary thing for us. I think the big impact for us now is uh, moving into some other areas that we're, we're starting to develop uh, knowledge in and that would be in particularly uh, uh, Flash. Norman, great to have you on theCUBE. I want to give you the last word. Share with the folks out there. You know, you get your young sons in, in the business, obviously they're going to, you know, the, the young gun's going to take over new school, social sales, all this stuff's going on. What, what's going on in the industry? Share in your own words, just in a big picture, this moment in time, of all the inflection points we've lived through, why is this more hyped up? Why are people so uh, on top of this trend, this tectonic shift than ever before? Well, I think that, that it's just been this acceleration in the marketplace. We have uh, witnessed no less than uh, an order of magnitude of change, and social is the big shift, and, and we see it as the big play in the future, cloud. Social change, go to crowdchat.net slash IBM Edge to jump on our social channel. We'll be watching you, Norman. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. This is theCUBE here, live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back after this short break.